Um, the sequence of poems is called The Underwater House. First poem is Going Under. After my house slipped into the sea, I became a landlubber's rumour, like the Leoness bells ringing below the waves to the Scilly Isles, or Cleopatra's royal quarters off the shores of Alexandria. A year later, my Siamese grew webbed paws, spent hours with his fur slicked back, pouncing on crabs or skittering after anything quick and skinny and silver. Glazing over. Like a long distance swimmer or exiled monarch, I've lived for more years than I care to remember with my portholes and my velux and my tight fitting frames. I'm a chroma fisherman's daughter. Up there, neighbours complained that UVPC ruined a home's character. Down here, it's a godsend. I lunch alone on mollusks and clams, fish row and lava bread strong iodine bite. Last spring, a salt marsh lamb slipped off the cliff like a gift. Its flesh was pink and steaming in the pan and did not smell of fish. Inventory. I have three wetsuits, two pairs of black flippers and a face mask that leaks in the winter swells. My oxygen tanks are stacked against mother's umbrella stand near the porch airlock. Yesterday, I slung my last winter coat out into the current, red lining zigzagged with salt water slime. Keeping your head below water. Alice says she can see my chimney smoking at low tide. She tells me the ministry mistake it for something foreign. A submarine, perhaps, with fat missiles slung low in its hold like a bag, like a clutch of salmonella eggs. I have to be watchful. I collect driftwood when the beach is a blank page notebook belonging to the drowned. Undersea cultivation. Derek Jarman, eat your heart out. All that dried out, washed up flotsam and jetsam. All those drought loving, po faced plants. My lawn is a forest of kelp. Sea anemone wink like ruby lips in my rockery. The allotments crammed with mussel beds, sea cucumber, sarcasm and wakame. My lobsters hatch by moonlight in a sunken cage. One barnacle girl is 48, her belly jellied with offspring. A rubber suit and a portion of bream. I had a lover for a while named George, a salvage specialist who front crawled into my seabed by mistake. He took the wrong turn by the wreck of the SS Solway, flooded the doorway as I shoved my shoulder hard against the rubber seal. Foam swilled over the blue striped runner down to the pantry. I cooked him a fillet of bream and offered a china cup brimming with fennel. He was my regular Sunday guest. His snorkel tap tap tapping on the porch, loitering there like Jeremy Fisher with his fat sinewy legs. One month later, I could stand it no longer. I unpeeled his rubber suit like a banana. His cock was a fat whelk sliding into the silk of my vagina. My whole body puddled, then corkscrewed with pleasure. Our skin was as cool as a porpoise's flank, and his buttocks were giant pearls. My Mark Antony slept deeply, starfished over the bed, snoring slightly. I dreamed of us herding sea cows in the mid-Atlantic ridge, we could cable knit gamsies together in the long autumn nights. Asps and baskets. I woke as light filtered through the bladder rack. His wetsuit was gone. A note by the lamp swam before my eyes. Sunlight, dry land, vitamin D, 
I don't want the watery blueness of your love. I want a woman to warm me. He'd taken oxygen and a whaler's harpoon that belonged to my father. I sulked like a lobster trapped in, his, in her pot and fed the cat succulent fish heads. I scythed the algae and sewed the nets. I whitewashed the bathroom with fungicide paint and wound a sea snake about my wrist. Siren. I dreamt a fishmonger sneaked in last night and scored me delicately with his knife. There are slits in my cheeks. I run my fingers over the bed linen. My legs are fused. Silver scales rub against cotton. I flop onto the bedroom rug and breathe in the brine. My lungs are flooded like a reef. I flick the windows open with my tail and my diver's gear flows away on the tide. This old house settles deeper into the sandbank. Copper-bottomed pots and pans are battering the Belfast sink. I swim into the garden and free the lobster, unwinding the rubber bands that grip her claws.